What is up, my friends? It looks like we are live. Let's give it a few minutes for some people to pop in here. We'll go ahead and get this shared out to all the peoples and all the friends while we wait. <clears throat> Do throw that up there as well. Course students, give it just a few minutes. All kinds of crazy noises going on in the other room. Live on YouTube. Okie dokie. Okay. Share it over there. <clears throat> and again, just wait a few minutes for some people to pop in. And holy cow, got to catch up on Facebook. Got 93 things waiting right now. Notifications, that's what those things are called. Do, 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 do. Okie dokie. Almost done. Okay. <clears throat> No, let's just give it a minute. <clears throat> Didn't do a whole lot of <clears throat> notifications about today, sending out messages this morning or anything like that. So we might have a teeny tiny little turnout today, but that's fine. That's fine. Looks like we got ourselves a one person watching. Hello, one person. Very nice to see you. Taurus is all kinds of tuckered out. All kinds of tuckered out. And for those of you guys that are watching this on the live or on the replay, feel free to still ask your raw feeding and fresh food questions uh, after the live stream is over, and I will do my best to answer them. And for those of you guys that are joining us for the first time, the entire point of this live stream is just to give you guys an opportunity to hop on and ask your raw feeding and fresh food questions, and I do my best to answer them. Get ourselves some kombucha while we wait. Oh, it just looks gross. Ah, delicioso. Delicioso. Okay. Oh. It was a late night slash morning yesterday. Got up and had a whole bunch of fun with the boys. Went and gave them a W A L K out in some serious, serious rain. They got soaking wet. So wet. Then the wife and I went on a date. It was pretty fun. Ooh. Got ourselves three people watching now. What is up, my friends? If you are here, make sure to drop a comment in the to the comments section so that I know who is watching. Why not? Let's go ahead and we'll shoot out an email about today's live stream as well. Do, do. And we got four people watching. Hello, friends. Very nice to see you. Make sure to drop a comment into the comments section so that I know you are here. And again, the whole point of this live stream is just to give you guys the opportunity to pop on here and ask some raw feeding and fresh food questions. Um, let's go ahead and get this guy sent out. We'll send out an email to the beep. And we got five people watching now, which is super cool, super cool. Um, Christina saying hello. Ariane is waving. Very nice to see you. Christina saying not being on long. I'm sick. Oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. That's not good. I hope that you get feeling better. Suzanne is saying hi, Scott. Hello, Suzanne. Very nice to see you. Let's just go ahead and live on YouTube. Sending out this email right now. <laughs> And feel free to start dropping in those questions right now, you guys. Okay. Okay. 
So what are you guys up to today? You guys feeding anything interesting and new and fun? I know this is a super exciting live stream right now, but it's the beginning and I did not do a whole lot of sharing for this particular live stream. <clears throat> so I'm not very surprised that it's pretty slow, pretty slow. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy sent off. <laughs> Send it to all the peeps on the raw feeding 101 list. Live on YouTube. Boy fake. All right. And we are sent off there. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we got going on. Christina is saying, did you see the Sea Wolf article? I did not. Sea Wolf article. Let's see if I can find anything on the Google pans. Uh, I see lots of things about sea wolves. I don't know quite what you're talking about, though. Do you want to give me some more info and maybe I can find something on it here? Looks like we got ourselves seven people watching. What is up, my friends? If you've got your raw feeding and fresh food questions, drop them into the comments section. For now, <clears throat> we're trying to figure out what uh, Christine is talking about, about the Sea Wolf article. Because I'm not sure what is going on. And if you don't mind, while you're here, you guys, put a thumbs up on this video. We've got seven people watching, so we should have seven thumbs up. Yes, put the thumbs up on the video. Uh, Michaela is here saying, hello, Scott. This is my first live feed. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you for coming, Michaela. Very nice to have you here. Uh, Jessica Burgess is here. Hello, Jessica. Very nice to see you as well. And make sure that while you guys are here to ask your raw feeding and fresh food questions. Um, they are wolves that eat stuff from the sea. That totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. I There's a lot of, um, I don't know if I want to say a lot, but there are very well documented wolf packs that survive on a lot of fish and seafood. So it doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't surprise me even a little bit. And we got ourselves eight people watching now, which is awesome. Make sure that you guys are dropping in your raw feeding and fresh food questions, especially the new peoples here, like a Michaela. Uh, I don't know if Jessica Burgess has been here before, but if you are new, oh, goodness, I screwed up the camera. There we go. Um, then <coughs> make sure to ask your questions. Uh, Jamie is here, course student, friend, moderator here on the channel saying, hey, what is up, Jamie? Very nice to see you. Uh, Michaela is saying, do you have any tips for weight gain? The first thing I would say would be to um, make sure that you properly identify the fact of, you know, whether or not you actually need to have some weight gain on your dog. Uh, sometimes we think that we should be putting extra weight on our dogs because we're so conditioned to having larger dogs because of what we see with dogs and like the AKC and stuff like that. And guys, remember, give the video a thumbs up while we're while you are here. But um, oftentimes, a lot of the dogs that are in AKC showings and show dogs and you know champion dogs, those kinds of things, are really overweight dogs not really overweight but they really they are overweight dogs so that'd be the first thing is identify um truly that you do need to put weight onto your dog and two the healthy way to increase your dog's weight is to simply increase the amount of food that you're feeding them uh not things like satin balls or giving them crazy amounts of fat or giving them crazy extra amounts of protein but simply increasing the amounts of all the foods that they are being fed you know a classic simple way to answer that would be if <clears throat> 
they're being fed 2%, then bump them up to 2.5%. If they're being fed 2.5%, then bump them up to 3 You know, increase overall across the board with all the food that they are being fed. Increase that to have them gain weight. Um, because otherwise you're just giving them a bunch of fat or a bunch of extra protein or a bunch of extra carbs and you're not really doing it the healthy way. You want to give them an overall increase in calories to to increase their weight. They need more calories to burn to create more weight, basically. So that's what I would do. Again, if you're feeding like three percent, then go to three and a half. But first, make sure that you actually do need to. Uh, increase the weight with your dogs. If you are in the Raw Feeding 101 Facebook group, then feel free to make a post there, you know, asking for some advice, some help. Um, if you haven't already, join um, Ronnie Lejeune's group, Mission Slim Possible. They're all about weight gain, weight loss, healthy weight for dogs, that's exercise, all that kind of stuff. And they'd be able to help you out there as well. Uh, let's see here. Linda or Jennifer is saying, waving. Hello, Jennifer. Very nice to see you. A friend and moderator here on the channel and a moderator in the Raw Feeding 101 group. Uh, Linda is saying, is turmeric paste considered a warming supplement? I believe so. I believe so. All I know is that it's a super, super effective supplement and I love it. And we feed it every single day. And guys, while you're here, make sure to give the video a thumbs up so that more people see it. Uh, Bart is saying, how do you figure out a correct protein-fat-carb ratio? I feed virtually no carbs. I mean, there are some carbs that come along with the... Um, um, Oh my goodness, the fermented vegetables that we feed, as well as a few other things, but we feed very, very, very little carbs. And then the rest of the protein and fat comes from rotating our foods and feeding a variety of uh, different proteins and other foods like reproductive foods. So chicken eggs, quail eggs, raw milk, raw kefir, um, pork meat, beef meat, not chicken meat anymore because we can't feed chicken meat anymore and we can't feed turkey anymore either. Uh, duck meat, we have a wide range of high and low fat um, proteins and foods that are going into the dog's bodies. Michaela is saying, I have a tiny pit bull that is 40 pounds. She is super lean and totally fine with that, but so lean you can see her ribs and spine. So just looking to give her a couple of pounds. Okay, thank you. We started on 3% on Sunday. Yeah, Michaela, make sure that you share a, if you can, make sure that you share a picture in the Raw Feeding 101 Facebook group so we can take a look at this because sometimes, uh, depending on how severe those things are showing, that's not a problem either. Uh, it can actually be fairly ideal and healthy to be able to see a hint of those things. So share a picture in the Raw Feeding 101 group and tag me in there if you want me to so I can take a look at it in there at some point. But I'd be... <clears throat> I'd be interested in actually seeing the dog before recommending uh, increasing their food at all. Because if you increase their food and put a bunch of weight on them when you don't need to, and by the way, this is not real. This is not real. Ariane and I got goofy the other day and got some of those uh, <laughs> vending machine fake tattoo, get it wet, put it on things. And it's actually stayed on like quite well. It was like three days ago, but I did not get a Batman tattoo. Although this does make me want to put more on this arm but adding on the extra weight if you don't really need to can create a lot of problems a lot of problems joint problems cardiovascular problems pulmonary problems uh the list goes on and on and on so i'd be interested in seeing the dog before i recommended uh completely saying hey yes you should go and put more weight on this dog <laughs> sorrow says hulk smash the like button I agree. Yes. Hulk, Hulk smash the thumbs up button. You guys click the thumbs up button. So the more people see this video and hopefully get their dogs onto fresh foods. Um, <clears throat> Jamie says, I have a ton of people tell me that my dogs are too thin, but my vet tells me how amazing <clears throat> they look. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
It's sad, but most people are used to seeing overweight pups. My pup Jackson had continued to gain weight after being very sick. And with his activity level, I had to feed him 3% to get weight back on him. Uh, it still took a while, but he's good now. Yeah. And he got scary, scary skinny, like scary skinny. If I remember something like he was weighing 40 pounds and he lost something like 15 pounds. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just getting super comfortable here. Cause why not? It's the channel and it's some just hanging out with some homies tonight. So why not get comfortable? Um, but yeah, it's really is sad how often we see overweight dogs and it's like, you know, what do you do? Cause you can't walk up to somebody and say, Hey, did you know that your dog is like super fat? <laughs> Usually that conversation isn't going to go very well, but uh, I, I get the same thing as far as your dog's too skinny. Uh, Wolken, not so much cause we have to, f we have to work really hard to make sure that he doesn't have too much weight on him. But Horace is the exact opposite of the spectrum. Uh, he would be what is considered a, uh, as the cool kids call them, a skinny bitch. Uh, he just, I mean, we only have to feed him like a one point, if you want to use percentages, 1.75% on average of his body weight. And if we feed more than that, much more than that, like even just going up to 2%, he starts gaining weight. It's freaking crazy. It's crazy. But he's skinny. You get a little teeny tiny hint of his ribs, a little teeny tiny hint of his um, um, spine, that thing that's on their back. <laughs> but he's perfectly fine. Vet also checks him out. He's super healthy, happy, moves around really easy, no extra weight on his joints, pushing his heart harder, his lungs harder, anything like that. He's just a curious little guy. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Yeah, I'm talking about you, little bugger. Uh, JP is saying, Hey dog, dad, what is up JP? Very nice to see you, my friend. Uh, Linda is saying, who would you go to if your dog had seasonal allergies? I would go to this particular website here. ahvma.org I would find a holistic veterinarian in my area using this website and I would go and see them. That is what I would do. Uh, Jessica says, I bought your book and made the switch after my two-year-old Zuchin. Okay, let's see. I wonder if that's a breed of dog. If it is, we got to see it. Yep, it looks like it's a breed of dog. Oh, and it's just the cutest little thing. It's the cutest little thing. It looks kind of like a... It kind of looks like a little... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? Westy. There we go. A Westie and a Shizu mix, kind of. I like that. They're kind of cute. They're kind of cute. But um, they're saying, I bought your book. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, they're talking about uh, this beauty right here. This beauty right here. Get back on the shelf. Get back on the shelf. Uh, and made the switch after my two-year-old Zuchin, Zuchan, had struvite bladder stones and surgery. Ugh, scary. She was put on royal canine vet food, and I didn't like the ingredients. I don't blame you, Jessica. Well done on making the switch. Well done. Well done. Um, let's see here. Have you heard anything through the grapevine about when pet diet designer is going to publish their updated database the, to be completely honest the only thing that i've heard about pet diet designer and if pet diet designer the people behind pet diet designer uh ever see this feel free to send me a message and i'd be happy to update people but to my knowledge it had almost been and i'm not saying anything bad i'm not trying to like bad talk them but that it had essentially been abandoned basically and people weren't able to have um you know support questions or anything like that answered now this is just grapevine stuff i've never tried to put in a support request or an email or anything like that so i can't say firsthand that that has happened but the people that use it all the time which i don't use it all the time but the people that do use it all the time i had heard really weren't able to get much of a response from the people that ran it. So if there is an updated version coming, I haven't heard about it. 
but if there is one and pet diet designer wants to say, Hey, what's up? Would you mind saying something on your channel Then I'd be happy to say something on the channel about it and make a quick little video about it. Um, so to answer your question, no, I've not heard through the grapevine about when pet diet designer is going to publish their updated database, which I don't, I don't know what they would be doing to update their database because to my knowledge, it's largely just coming from the USDA. So unless the USDA is having a major update, I don't know exactly what it is that they'd be doing. But again, I don't know anybody behind Pet Diet Designer, so I can't intelligently or accurately uh, answer that question. Um, let's see here. And we got 19 peeps watching, and we've only got seven thumbs up. Come on, guys. Thumbs up the video. Let's, get, let's push this video out to more peoples. Uh, let's see here. Linda is saying that there are none in my area. Then second step. Okay, here's what we will do. Here is what we will do. Okay, that's what I, was, I know what I was trying to do, but my brain wouldn't put the two pieces of the puzzle together. Not Linda. <laughs> Come on, Scott. I just cannot freaking spell or anything today apparently i'm getting you a, a, a an awesome link my friend i'm getting you an awesome link here okay so this is the facebook page that i'll be putting into the comment section here this is the facebook page for my good friend dr Lori kosher she's been on the channel a couple of times and has been in an interview uh with dog dad's pack and if you guys don't know what that is you can go and check it out here at dogdadspack.com it's also in the comment section now but what i would do is going is i would talk to dr Lori kosher dr Lori kosher offers one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations as far as holistic veterinary services go, much like I do with the one-on-one -on -one consultation raw feeding stuff, like hourly calls and everything like that, uh, that you can find at rawfeeding101.com slash one-on-one. That's also in the comment section. But Dr. Larry Kozier offers these same things for holistic veterinary services. And that's what I would do. If you genuinely do not have a holistic vet in your area that can help you with that, Linda, talk to Dr. Lori Kozier. In fact, let's see if we can find, just find the direct link to her website. Should have this written down somewhere already, but I don't. Healthydogworkshop.com. There we go, consultations. So this is the direct link then. Ignore that Facebook link, Linda. Um, go here, healthydogworkshop.com slash consultation or consultations. Yeah, consultations. And <clears throat> there you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Lori Kozier, holistic veterinarian. Amazing. Amazing. So that's what I do. Forget the Facebook link. Go to the Healthy Dog Workshop link and set up a consultation with her. Um, let's see here. Um, catch up, Scott. Catch up. Jamie said he weighed 34 pounds, and because he was so sick, he dropped weight super fast and weighed 21 pounds while playing the kibble game. I finally had to be the advocate for his health and thankfully found Raw Feeding 101, and he, quote, magically wasn't sick anymore. I will never feed kibble ever again. I do not blame you. And I am so glad that you did find the raw feeding 101 course, my friend, because the, the little guy, Jackson, needed to, uh, needed to be around to win ribbons and be handsome and orange and white and beautiful. <clears throat> so I'm glad he is better because that's scary. 34 pounds to 21 pounds. It's way too much weight to drop. Uh, Jessica Burgess says she's a Shizu Bishan freeze mix. Okay, there you go. Uh, well, I can say it. I'm not happy with it. Waste of $20. Uh, Jennifer referring to pet diet designer. It, I think that it has a lot of potential. Uh, it's just super, super clunky, super clunky. Uh, it, it's, 
And I'm not talking bad about it. I'm just giving an honest review of it. It can be very clunky and slow, like where you'll click a button to say, okay, go to this step or do this thing now. And it has like a two, three, four second delay where you think that you didn't click something, but really what it's doing is taking multiple seconds to process the fact that you clicked something and then execute whatever process you just told it to do, like save this or something. Hi, Woken. Very nice to see you, my friend. Very nice to see you. Smooches. There you go. There you go. So it can be really clunky. I think that has a lot of potential. And I think that if somebody came out with one better, they'd make a buttload of money, but it's... It's it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. <clears throat> uh, Jamie is saying, Linda, have you tried feeding colostrum or slippery elm bark to help with seasonal allergies? Dog Naturally has a bunch of great articles on both supplements and all the benefits of each. There's also that. Um, Linda is saying, good, because my dog is going to chew his feet off. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that. So go to that website that I shared and set up a call with Dr. Lori Kosher because she's amazing. She's been practicing for a long time. She went to Cornell. Um, super amazing veterinarian. <clears throat> <clears throat> In fact, Kimberly and Kimberly Gautier from Keep the Tail Wagging, um, Gregory from Lucas and Ruby, Billy from Answers, they all just uh, attended her expo out in new york let's see here jennifer is saying pdd was supposed to add the foods we feed such as bone and food etc ah how did you hear about that jennifer was just was this just like a grapevine conversation did somebody from the company come out and say it how did you come across that info um, let's see here. JP is saying, is it okay for dogs to eat rodents if they catch it like a gopher or a bunny or anything like that? They could, but here's the problem with feeding, um, wild rodents like that. There's two big problems. One, you'd want to freeze it first if you were going to and make sure that you gut it and take out the intestines, which is where all the nasty stuff likes to live, and inspect the rest of what you're going to feed, like the organs, to make sure that they didn't have any kind of a worm infestation or something like that, okay? The second problem with feeding wild rodents is that a lot of the time, I shouldn't say a lot of the time or even how often, it's possible that those rodents at some point were exposed to or even very recently ate a rodent poison of some kind, which obviously you don't want your dog consuming by consuming the rodent. So if you're going to feed it, I would remove the stomach contents and intestines to make sure that if there is that poison in there, uh, at least it's gone from the stomach area and you do not have the parasites that could be living inside of the intestinal area and freeze it for three weeks at least before you do and check the organs like the heart and liver to make sure that they look healthy uh, with those things then yes you could melissa smootin is saying thumbs up from the uk a thumbs up my friend from from the us from the us uh christine is saying has anyone heard of a freeze dry raw dog food bag i can't remember the name brand but i happened to be at the pet store and they were pushing it the Pushing it there, ingredients say freeze-dried meats and meal. Yeah. No, no. Uh, all four pauses saying, I am getting my labradoodle fixed in a few days. Is there anything I should change with the diet that he's on to help or whatever? Um, I don't want to give you medical advice, but I can tell you what I would do. Uh, if I had concerns that I was not going to be able to, like, let's say, and this is with a surgery of any kind that has a major open suture, like a, like a fix would be. Um, if I had major concerns that the dog potentially could get to their wound and sit there and lick on it, the, and the cone wasn't going to work. You're going to have to leave them alone or something like that. You know, there's potential for them to be able to get to and lick that wound. And you're not going to be there to prevent them from doing that. Then one thing that you may consider doing, consider, I'm not telling you to do it necessarily, but one thing that you may 
consider doing is feeding HPP foods until uh, the wound heals. And it's less of an open wound, really, because that's what it is. I mean, it's a purposeful wound, but it's a wound and it has the potential to be exposed to the bacteria that's in your dog's food. Now that we all know, everybody wants to scream about the bacteria in raw foods and how it's scary, right? And it's not to the healthy animals that have the ability to fight that stuff off. But, but those same uh, pieces of bacteria getting inside of an open wound is a whole other situation, right? So if you are able to just make sure that your dog is not going to be able to sit there and lick at their sutures, then you should be fine. And you just want to um, watch them really close and make sure that they don't sit there and lick at that, especially, not at all, but especially after meal times. Now, if you have to leave this dog alone, like if you have to put them in their kennel uh, with a cone of shame on, so to speak, and you have to go to work or something for a few hours, then I would really consider going to HPP foods temporarily while that wound heals um, to minimize the potential of bacteria exposure to that wound. And then when, um, when the wound is healed, go back to your regular foods. So that is a potential thing to look into. And for those of you that do not know what HPP is, it's high pressure pasteurization. I did a video with Gregory Lucas here on the channel. Just type in Gregory, G-R-E-G-O-R-I, Lucas, L-U-K-A-S, H-P-P, uh, and watch that video that I did with him to learn more about what HPP foods are. But it's basically just raw foods that aren't technically raw anymore. I mean, they Ask 10 people and you'll get 10 answers. But it's been essentially cooked with pressure, right? It's been smashed to kill the bacteria so that no one gets sick, okay? And so it's sterile. If you want to call it that, it's sterilized raw food, okay? So that's something you should consider. Uh, watch that video that I did with Gregory Lucas to get some more information on it. Uh, let's see here. Heather is saying super late because I just got off work, but I'm here. Hello, everyone. Hello, Heather. Very nice to see you. Um, uh, Heather is our resident elephant expert. She works at the zoo and is amazing. You should see her house. It is like its own little mini zoo. It's quite awesome. I'm kind of jealous. Um, Life with Doberman. Love it. Love Dobies. I use Perfectly Rossum's site for how much to feed my Doby. Love Perfectly Rossum. Love Perfectly Rossum. In fact, all the core students, my one-on-one -on -one consultation people, my six-week program people, uh, pretty much everybody that is looking for bone percentage information, I send them to Perfectly Rossum like including core students and everybody, right? Because it's just that good. And Ronnie knows that I do it, and she loves that I do it. <laughs> it's just more people going over the perfectly awesome, right? But it's like one of the best, it's the best bone percentage resource on the internet. <clears throat> the creator, uh, Jennifer says, the creator of Pet Diet Designer told me that via email before I bought it. When was this, Jennifer? How long ago was that? Um Let's see here. Christine is saying chamomile and peppermint tea to help with calming the allergies. Uh, keep the feet clean every time they go out. You can even use baby wipes and put the tea on them so you can clean and soothe. There you go. There you go. Um, all four pasta saying, okay, thanks. I'll look into it. You are welcome, my friend. Yeah, watch that video that I did with Gregory Lucas on HPP Foods. Uh, JP is saying, are cage-free chickens and eggs better than caged ones? P.S. I feed free-range chicken to my dogs. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the humane part of it aside which I think is a huge factor in itself, not just for the moral reason of it, but for the quality of the food. Uh, that aside, yes, it's much, much better. Animals that are fed species-appropriate diets and live species-appropriate lives produce better, higher-quality food. So a chicken 
that is able to walk out in the grass, consume grass, consume bugs, consume the grains that they want. Um, those are the healthy animals that are out there able to suck up the vitamin D. They create better eggs. They create better meat. Yes, yes, all around. It is better. Uh, JP is saying our cage-free chick. Oh, I just read that. <laughs> Linda says, I've done that. I done that feet washing each time doesn't stop him. Yeah, Linda, get on the horn with uh, Dr. Lori Kozier for sure. For sure. Um, and if you can, just a heads up, Linda, if you can and you've seen your uh, current, what do you want to call them? Traditional vet about this already. Um, see if you can get the medical records for your dog ahead of time and send them to Dr. Lori Kozier or at least have them available to send to Dr. Lori Kozier. Okay. Let's see here. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> A trade DN one is saying, hello. Hello. Very nice to see you. And thank you guys. We got 23 people watching and we've got 11 thumbs up. Keep those thumbs up coming. Thank you very much. You guys, I love you. I love you. I appreciate it. The more people that thumbs up the video, the more YouTube pushes this out to more people and the more people that we can share raw feeding information with. Uh, let's see here. Christina is saying that must be the HPP food that I just looked up. Just looked it up when I put in HPP foods, it was there. There you go. Linda is saying, I've read that duck eggs are better than chicken eggs. What's your take on that? They're just different. They're really just different. Unless your dog has some kind of intolerance or allergy to one or the other, they're just different. There's no, I mean, yeah. Some people just think that it's, some people that think that by something being less common, it automatically means that it's better which I don't get because it's not correct, <laughs> but they're just different. They're just different. If you fed a high quality, again, short of allergies and that stuff, if you fed a high quality, organic, free range, pasture raised, you know, species appropriate fed chicken egg, and then fed the equivalent duck egg, your dog would benefit from both of them. So yeah, they're just different. Um, boop, boop, doo, Jennifer saying a few months ago, he said the update was to be in March of 2019. Have you sent them another email asking what the status of the update is? Um, need to get this creep stash and everything going. It's not working out. It's not, mm -mm, it's not good. Linda's saying, yes, I have them in his file at home. Good. Then you can get them to Dr. Lori Kozier quickly. Um, is HPP the same as freeze dried? No. So I need to get like a whiteboard or something here. Let's see here. Uh, all right, we'll do this. We'll do this. It's, it's. Okay, so let's say, don't want to show that company because it's not what we're here for. So let's say that this is this whole, right? This is a container, big metal container, right? Right? I don't know how well you guys can see that. Here's this big metal container, okay? Inside of this big metal container, and we'll even give it walls so it looks more legit, okay? Inside this big metal container, they will put a bunch of food, a big lump of raw food, right? Raw food. Okay. And it's probably backwards for you guys. It looks like it is, but big bunch of raw food. Then what they do is they pump this bad boy full of pressure and it's got water and everything in it too. So there's crazy, crazy, crazy <coughs> amounts of pressure on this food to the point where the bacteria, good and bad, are quite literally squished to death. 
So there's no beneficial bacteria. There's no harmful bacteria. They literally sterilize the food with pressure. Okay. That's what HPP food is, is they take raw foods and they smush to death <laughs> with pressure all of the bacteria, both beneficial and potentially harmful uh, bacteria. So it's a sterile raw food, raw quotations again. It's a sterile raw food. Okay. Freeze dried is just they are freezing it and removing the moisture that way. Um, <clears throat> if you want to get a good at home experiment of what freeze dried is, take a piece of raw meat doesn't matter what it is. You'll probably be able to see the effects best with a piece of chicken. Put it on a little plate or a piece of cardboard or something, okay? And flip it on one side and just leave it there and then put it in the, fr the freezer for 24 hours. Then come back and flip it to the other side and leave it there for 24 hours and keep going back and forth. And what you're going to see is it eventually dries out, not just freezes, but it dries out and that you know it's a lot more complicated when it comes to big batches and stuff but that's essentially what freeze-dried foods are but they are not the same they are not the same at all <clears throat> linda says he's allergic to chicken so i don't feed chicken eggs there you go then you are well off with duck eggs or quail eggs uh, my grandma's German Shepherd was on the raw diet since the day we got him, and his mother and father was not on the raw at all, and he grew way bigger than his mother and father. I just thought it was crazy. Pro I mean, that could be a combination of who knows how many things. It could just be genetics. It could be all kinds of crazy, crazy stuffs. But a species-appropriate diet may have played a part, may have played a part. But it, again, it could have just been genetics that he just got the big genes. Um, the two crazy cat ladies have popped in here. Hello, friends. Hello. I don't know if it's just Jay or if it's just Adrian or if it's Jay and Adrian, but hello, friends. Very nice to see you or see your avatar, I guess I should say. Um, uh, yes, the creep stash needs to leave. Oh my goodness. It does. It's not good. Mm -mm, it's not good. It's not good. It, mm -mm. It's not good. Uh, use a marker to draw. Here, we'll do this. Reaching over here. We'll use the screen guy. See if we can illustrate this a bit better so you guys can see what's going on. Do, 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 do. In case you guys couldn't see that. Do, 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 do. Drawing here on the channel. It's fun time with Scott drawing things, talking about HPP foods with crazy songs. <clears throat> Raw food. Okay. So one more time. Here's this big container. And again, this is backwards, but it says raw food, or at least it's supposed to. Big container, middle container. They fill it full of water and raw food, seen here. Then they put and pump in crazy, 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 crazy amounts of pressure, and they squish and kill all the bacteria, the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, all of it, and they sterilize the raw food with, um, well, it is raw food then, but they sterilize this raw food and create HPP raw foods, okay? That's what they do is they put raw food into a big metal container that has water in it. They give it crazy amounts of pressure and they sterilize it. And that's what HPP foods are. Veronica uh, is saying, Scott, do you have a vet that supports your raw feeding? I want to switch and I'm on uh, the research and learning path right now. Good for you. <clears throat> but all the vets near me, Phoenix, look at me like I've joined a cult. Uh, my friend, no, we do not have a raw supporting vet. Um, they luckily are not the constantly harp about it and blame everything on raw kind of people, or I guess I should say kind of veterinarians, but they don't support it either. But I'm glad that you are on the research path. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure to check out rawfeeding101.com. It's awesome stuff there. 
But if you're looking for a holistic and potentially raw feeding supporting veterinarian, use this website, ahvma.org, and the link that I just shared there about finding a holistic vet, and you should be able to find yourself a raw supporting veterinarian in your area. I believe that there are some, uh, a few actually, in the Phoenix area. Uh, let's see here. And the two crazy cat ladies are saying, hey, you. Hello. Hello. Um, Life with Doberman is saying my Doby gets 12. Let's let. I don't get the first sentence. My Doby gets 12 M. Let of this month's. I'm feeding him 3% and sometimes 3.5%. Uh, do you think that I should keep him at 3% or after 12 months give him less? His 8-pound body shape is 5 out of 10. So here I think I understand what it is that you're trying to, to ask. What I would say is that if your Doberman is an appropriate weight for their age, and they are conditioned well, you know, you can see a slight hint of their ribs, potentially a slight hint, you know, the last couple of ribs, not the entire cage, but the last couple, and look at your breed standard as well, and possibly just a teeny tiny bit of spine area there. Um, if the animal is properly conditioned on the amount of food that they're being fed now, then I would continue to feed that amount of food. If they start to gain too much weight or they become too skinny, then I would change that feeding amount by half of a percent, depending on which way you need to go. Then feed that for a couple of weeks and see uh, what you need to change. See if that fixed it or if you need to continue to do adjusting. So, you know, if you go from if your dog's gaining too much weight and if you're at three and a half percent and then go down to three and they're still gaining weight, then go down to two and a half. And if they're too skinny and you're trying to get them to gain weight, then the exact opposite of that. Um, let's see here. Christina is saying, I need to go coughing too much and I need my nebulizer. See you on Facebook. Feel better, Christine. Bye-bye, my friend. I hope that you feel better soon. Uh, JP is saying, what is your favorite kibble brand? I do not have one. Uh, I can't remember what Rodney said was, quote unquote, the best because it was made of natural ingredients and wasn't pumped full of synthetics. Uh, I would go with that one, but I do not have a favorite kibble brand. Uh, I fed Wolken kibble for two to three months maybe a little bit longer before we transitioned him after we got him and it was Imes. And that's the only kibble that I've ever fed a dog. And I never fed Horace kibble. He was on Imes too when he was at the breeder, but I've never fed kibble. I know to be completely blunt, Jack shit about kibble. I just don't, it's just not my wheelhouse. So I'm sorry, my friend. I can't help you there. Uh, Ariane is laughing at me and my random songs. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Trage DN1 is saying, what about probiotics? Should one get that as well? What I would do, you can get them. What I would do is I would feed um, reproductive foods like kefir. That's what I would do. Look into that. Type in on YouTube here when you're done with this video. Type in Billy Hookman, spelled Billy, B-I-L-L-Y, Hookman, H-O-E-K-M-A-N, Dog Dad, Kiefer. And watch that video that I did with Billy about Kiefer. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Heather is saying there are a couple of vets in Phoenix that do support raw feeding, but they aren't near me either. There you go. Um, or is probiotics unnecessary when feeding raw? I would rather you got them from Whole Foods. Again, see the kefir video. Uh, Veronica is saying you're awesome. Thank you. Now you are awesome, Veronica, for doing your research before making the switch. And again, check out rawfeeding101.com. We would love to see you in the course members area. Uh, Jennifer is saying, looks like HPP is the same as pressure canning. Pretty much. Pretty much. 
Um, I don't think that, I don't know for sure, don't quote me, but I don't think that an excessive amount of heat is used. Like there isn't a lot of pressure canning to my knowledge, but I don't, I've never done pressure canning. Uh, but it's pretty similar. Yeah. It's just food, water, <laughs> squish, done. <laughs> uh, Jessica is saying, what is irri irradiation? Had a bag of single ingredient chicken treats once say that it was radiated. I, I I don't know. I don't know. Let's ask the Google pants about what irradiated. I mean, you obviously want to think about radiation, but I don't it, I I really hope it's not the same thing. According to the Google pants, it's expo uh, exposed to radiation. So I really hope it's not that. Irradiation definition for food. Uh, food irradiation is the process of exposing food and food packaging to ionizing radiation, such as gamma rays, x-rays, <laughs> electron beams. So it looks like it's irradiated food, radiation. No, I wouldn't feed it. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. <laughs> I would not feed it, whatever it is. Uh, Veronica is saying, Heather, I, I found a few, but they're either central or southeast Phoenix. Oh, that felt amazing. Plus, I've called and some aren't accepting new clients. Yeah, keep looking. Use the AHVMA link that I shared above. You can find one. Um, JP says, are raw eggs better as a supplement or food? It's the same thing. It's just a label that you're putting on it, right? If I give my dog an egg and say I'm giving them a supplement and feed it to them, and I give my dog an egg and say it's a food, it's the same egg, right? So now we're just it's just semantics. Just feed the egg. Just feed the egg. Uh, Trage Dion is saying, yes, I give my dog kefir. He loves it. Then you are good. Then you're good. You can keep going with other um, whole foods like raw milk, raw cow's milk, raw goat's milk, raw, I don't know, llama milk, <laughs> whatever you've got. But there you go. Uh, let's see here. Linda's saying, that's what I've had my dog on. Billy is wonderful. He's amazeballs. Amazeballs indeed. One of the smartest dudes I know. Uh, let's see here. Heather is saying, I think Rodney liked Carna 4. I think that was the name. I think that you are right. I think that you are right. I think that you're right. Uh, Angela is saying, just getting on, trying to catch up. Hello, Angela. Very nice to see you. I hope that you got my message earlier. I saw your message and responded. Um, Veronica is saying, I was just reading on Kiefer, such, such a science lesson. Do you think there's more benefit to dairy kefir? I read you can make kefir from coconut milk too and get the um, get much of the same gains. Um, Jessica says, oops, no more irradiated chicken. Yeah, it sounds kind of scary, Jessica. It does kind of sound kind of scary. You never know what you're going to get out there. Um, but not feeding it anymore sounds like a good plan. But back to Veronica's about the dairy kefir. Yes. I, um, I don't know. Here's what I'll say. I don't know much about water kefir and coconut water kefir. Okay. But, or coconut milk kefir. But to me, the benefits of feeding kefir, some of the biggest benefits I will say is the fact that it's start if, if you're using raw milk, is that it's a, starting as a complete food with the raw milk, right? Which is a massive benefit all within itself. And then you are pre-digesting it, pre-digesting it with fermentation, turning it into kefir. It's, I would, <clears throat> I'm not saying I wouldn't feed water kefir or coconut milk kefir, but I'm going to continue making kefir ourselves here at home out of um, raw milk and organic kefir. That's what we're going to do. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Michaela says, where can you buy kefir? All over the place. Uh, you can go to like, I'll say the hippy dippy stores. Uh, you can go to Whole Foods. You can go to Good Earths if you have those in your area. Um, but I would, for the highest quality kefirs, I would start with the hippy dippy stores first 
you know, whole foods, those kinds of things. Sometimes Trader Joe's has it and go for the organic stuff. Um, but I would start there and see if you can get organic kefir. Okay. And if at all possible, organic grass fed kefir. If you can't, if those things just aren't available for you, try to get your hands on raw milk and then use just the, uh, I think it's Lifeway. It comes in a blue, blue bottle. Lifeway kefir. Yes. Yes. Lifeway. Uh, you can get that from Walmart and tons of other grocery stores, uh, Kroger stores, etc. Comes in a blue bottle. Says Lifeway on it. Get the plain, the not flavored stuff. Use the raw milk and follow the recipe that's on that video that I did with Billy Hookman about kefir. And you can make your own at home with nothing but glass jars, the milk, and the kefir. You can take a tiny container of kefir and make endless amounts of kefir, essentially. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. JP is saying, Veronica, can you get kefir from coconut oil as well? Uh, that's a, I don't think that you could. I don't think that you could. I'm not saying that you can, but I don't think that you could. Uh, Angela is saying, I'll check out Roth Feeding Miami as you recommended as a way to transition. I remember thinking that as a primary source, it's a bit pricey, but maybe not for what I am looking for, checking it out. Yes, and... Let me grab you something, my friend. And for everybody else here. Mm, get you guys a discount link for Raw Feeding Miami. And there's a freaking angry puppy outside because people don't watch their dogs in my neighborhood. And it's amazingly frustrating. But this... <clears throat> a link to raw feeding miami if you go through that link uh, i believe that you can save 10 to 15 percent off of your first purchase okay it's not forever but your first purchase you can use that link to save 10 to 15 percent i think it's 15 percent now um <clears throat> but yeah use that what i would do angela is get the foods that you can get at the lower price around you first and then for the things like the organs and stuff that you were talking about in your message use raw feeding miami to source the things that you can't get locally um boo doop do trage dion says i'm gonna feed my dog kefir southern from now on uh that's both probiotics plus raw food golf clap golf clap Golf clap. And if Ariane is watching, will you please go and shut that door that Wolken just opened? Um, let's see. Michaela says, awesome, thanks. You are welcome. And Ariane says, I guess you wore the appropriate shirt for today. Because Hulk smash? I don't know. Hulk smash. I don't know. Um, Angela says, you're very helpful to all your followers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, my friend. And I think that Angela is a course student as as well. So Veronica, if you've got questions about the course, go and ask Angela or Jamie or who knows how many other people are on here that took the course. Uh, Heather says, Walmart has organic kefir. I was surprised. Yes, they do. I think that it, some of them might only carry flavored organic kefirs, but if they have plain organic kefir, then yeah, all the better. Um, smiles from Angela. Michaela is saying, thank you, Heather. Yes, thank you, Heather. And Ariana is saying, Heather, we've started using that same one. There you go. Uh, Veronica is saying, I don't think you can need sugar to eat and start fermenting. There you go. There you go. There you go now. Well, all right, guys. We are at the end of our session here. We're about at an hour. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell that pops up after you click the subscribe button so that you see all the future videos that I post. Tomorrow, I have a review for the Veggie Delight Zing Salad Fermented veg Vegetables posting here on the channel, so make sure that you don't miss that. And make sure to check out rawfeeding101.com for all of your raw feeding training needs. But most importantly, remember that you don't have to be perfect to be an amazing dog owner. You just have to do your best every day and try to improve as you go forward. A uh, peace, my friends, peace. Jim is saying, thank you. You're welcome, Jim.
Jimmy said, love the course. I'm always here to help too and post in the group on Facebook. A ton of amazing people will comment as well. Yes, they will. Uh, TrajDN1 saying thank you for the imp info. Michaela saying thank you. Irene saying thank you. Uh, Jamie saying see y'all. Yes, thank you all. Love you all. You're awesome. Have a great day. And oh, oh, you guys get to hear it first. Melissa saying thank you as well. You're welcome, Melissa, and everybody else. Friday live streams in the group. Friday live streams in the Raw Feeding 101 group are moving to Thursdays. Big change. So you guys are hearing it here first. I'm going to make a post about it, but you guys are hearing it first. The live streams in the Raw Feeding 101 group are officially moving from Fridays to Thursdays. Fridays have become too crazy for me, and I need that evening to do other stuff from now on. So they are moving permanently to Thursdays. Same time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. The Raw Feeding 101 Facebook group live streams will happen there on Thursdays. Okay? I'll see you guys soon. if I can figure out how to turn off the live stream. <laughs>